And there we watch Hurricane Florence approaching the coast of the Carolinas. Very clearly a powerful storm with a broad field of clouds. The actual hurricane force winds, they're in the circle in that red area. It's about 120, 130 miles across. That's a very broad area of winds that are 75 miles an hour or greater. Now at the rate it's moving, northwestward at 16 miles an hour, it's going to be approaching the coast of North Carolina. Landfall will be tricky. Here's the forecast cone as of late afternoon on September 12th. Notice the wind speed projection Thursday afternoon, 125 miles an hour, going down Friday to 115, Saturday to 80. But here's the problem. Remember, the forecast cone is only for the center of the storm. So it's possible once it gets near the coast, it's going to slow down. That's almost certain. But what's possible is it could take a turn more toward the southwest, hugging the coast of the Carolinas before eventually going inland. As it slows down, rain becomes the bigger threat. Look at all the computer models, very consistent through Thursday, and then they slow down literally and start meandering simply because the steering winds are light. But this will also be a very bad scenario. Even though the winds could diminish, the fact that it slows and hugs the coast means the rain will increase, the storm surge will increase. Now focus on this, 2 o'clock in the afternoon on Thursday, it shows the center of the storm offshore, the outer bands moving onshore, which is the threat of tornadoes. It also shows the winds blowing directly right on the coast of North Carolina. That is storm surge there. Now the strongest winds, as I showed you, they're right around the core, the middle of the storm, in the eye wall. So even if the winds go down to 120, 110, the problem is as this slows, people will be under those winds for a longer period of time. So again, winds blowing directly onshore, that's your storm surge, Friday morning, 3 a.m. Notice the projection, early Friday morning, as the sun comes up into Friday afternoon, not moving all that much. That means flooding becomes a big deal. So there are storm surge warnings up for the coast of North Carolina and most of South Carolina. That's due to the wind that will push water ashore. Those same locations under a hurricane warning because the winds will easily exceed 75 miles an hour. A flash flood watch also covers those same locations. And just look at these projections of how much rain could fall going into Saturday morning. Easily 20 inches of rain for the coastline of North Carolina. Now that's 20 plus. It could be 25, it could be 30 inches of rain, especially along the coast of North Carolina, and then gradually tapering as you get to central North Carolina and also into central South Carolina. So that's the latest on Hurricane Florence. Now there's a subtropical storm by the name of Joyce. This one, it's in the north central Atlantic, heading toward the southwest at six miles an hour. Now you know a subtropical storm is a hybrid between a tropical storm and a regular storm. It's going to drift southwestward and then turn right back on itself, heading back to the northeast. In the process, winds go up, becoming probably a full tropical storm by Saturday, and then heading into the colder waters of the North Atlantic where it should begin to fade. But Florence, though, that's the one to watch. All of this goes on as there are other active systems. Look at the uh, Gulf of Mexico. On the 39th anniversary of Hurricane Frederick, there's a tropical disturbance in the central Gulf. That's going to go west-northwestward with a 70% chance of becoming a tropical depression before hitting the Texas coast. Mostly that means rain, though. Now we go to the Caribbean because there's Tropical Storm Isaac. Most of the clouds, the middle and high clouds, are blown on one side. The system is rapidly going west at 20. There's wind shear, and that's preventing it from getting stronger, which is good. As it moves through Mar Martinique and Guadeloupe, likely a medium tropical storm on a straight westward path. Notice the forecast wind speed. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, only about 45 miles an hour. So beyond that, it's tough to say what it will do, but at least we know right now that gets into the Caribbean and keeps on moving to the west. And then in the eastern Atlantic, still Hurricane Helene. Winds are down, it's moving northward at 14, and you can tell by how the clouds are being blown, that's pretty much the direction it's going to move. At the same time, it hits colder water, and then slowly begins to weaken as it passes near the Azores, and then points toward northern Europe. Don't forget Hawaii, tropical storm Olivia, moving through the Hawaiian Islands right now, steadily at 15 miles an hour. That means rain is the issue there. And also you see the clouds blown mostly on one side. Some wind shear helping to keep that system in control. So in the big picture, we've got four named storms in the Atlantic, a tropical disturbance in the Gulf of Mexico. Stay updated, stay safe. I'm Chief Meteorologist Alan Seals.